So what is the best professional camera equipment you need for YouTube cinematography in 2021? Well, in this video, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm so excited for this one because this is like the best of the best. Which camera for the money is the best one for YouTube? And I'm very lucky to have my hands on what I think is the best camera for YouTube cinematography by far. So the first camera I want to talk about is the Sony A7S III. Released last year in 2020, it's the first full frame, high spec mirrorless camera that Sony's released with a flip screen. This is an absolute game changer. Before that, we had the A7 III, which were an unbelievable camera, one that I was a massive fan of, one that I use on my channel all the time. But when they released this with a flip screen that was actually useful, comparable to like all the Canon systems, this were a game changer for the whole YouTube and vlogger, content creator market. This became number one. It shoots in 4K, 100 frames per second, and it can also shoot in 1080, 240 frames per second, or 200 if you're in the UK. It shoots in 422 10-bit and the image quality and colors that come out of this thing are the best I've ever seen. It even looks better than my FS5 Mark II, which we're uh, filming on right now. Again, from like a vlogging YouTuber setup, the lens that you'd want to be combining with this would be the Sony 16-35 f2.8 G Master. That is the perfect combination for YouTube. If you're a Canon shooter, then your best option would be the Canon EOS R5. Again, released last year. It's got the ability to shoot in 8K RAW, flip LCD screen, shoots in log, does everything that the Sony does. And the 45 megapixel sensor on the EOS R5 makes it very much the perfect video and photo camera. Whereas the A7S III only has a 12 megapixel sensor so it's very much a video centric camera as opposed to the R5, which can, can do both. The US R5 comes in at a higher price point and the lenses are much more expensive than the Sony lens range with the new RF lenses that they recently released. So for that, the lens combination that I would suggest is the 15 to 35 F2.8, beautiful lens, but very expensive. So that'd be the perfect kit to be renting out as and when you need it. Again, we're going to drop that one in there, the one that we're recording on right now, the Sony FS5 Mark II. This is sort of your first look into cine cameras in the Sony range. It has the ability to shoot in 4K, but not as high quality as the A7S III. Uh, it does shoot in 10-bit 422 at 1080. It's got an inbuilt variable ND filter, and it's got an XLR input for multi-channel recording. So this is like a proper cine camera, but it's not one that you could use for vlogging. So it's very much dependent on what your YouTube style is. If it's a talking headpiece, you could look at a camera like this. Um, but if you're vlogging or you need to have a little bit more accessibility, this wouldn't be the camera for you. Again, as this approaches into the uh, cinema camera range, it does still have an E-mount, which is what you'd see on the A7S III or the little A6600s. So Sony have made it really good for Sony shooters to be able to invest in that glass or rent glass and use it across all their camera ranges, which is not what you'd see in the Canon range. The final camera I want to talk about is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This thing's an absolute beast. The image quality that comes out of this is undeniable. It's amazing. But some of the big downfalls that I see with it are it doesn't have in-body image stabilization. It uses the Canon LP batteries, which are super small on a camera like that. So it doesn't have very long battery life and it's got a cropped sensor. So although the image quality is amazing, if you want to use it strictly for cinematography, it would be a good choice. But apart from that, if you were a vlogger or any other style of YouTube channel, this wouldn't be the one for you. So the accessories to go with these cameras, the first thing that I would suggest is the Rode VideoMic NTG. The Rode VideoMic NTG is literally like the perfect vlogger YouTuber microphone. It got released last year. One of the main features and the reason that I bought it was this microphone actually switches on when you switch your camera on. So gone are the days where you record a full segment and you forget to actually turn the power on onto your microphone and realize you've recorded without any audio for however long. Trust me, it's a killer. This thing will turn on automatically. It's also got a feature where if you're in a loud environment, you can record to multiple channels 
and one can be reduced to minus 20 decibels. So if you're at an event, for example, and you've got super loud, you've got a backup channel that's 20 decibels lower so that you never peak and lose your audio. It's got a variable gain changer on the back. It's got a bunch of features that just make this like the perfect professional YouTube microphone. So this is an audio test for the Rode VideoMic NTG. This is the latest edition from Rode. It got released in 2020. And for me, this is the best mic that you can buy right now as a YouTuber. One of the key features, as I mentioned before, is the fact that it switches on when you switch the camera on. No mistakes can be made anymore. There's no way that you can start rolling without turning the microphone on. It does it all for you. It's got the high pass filter. It's got the second channel for minus 20 if you need it. For me, it's literally the best that money can buy. The next stage up from that, if you were to use the FS5 cinema camera or anything with an XLR input, you'd then look at the Rode NTG4 Plus microphone. Again, it's part of the NTG range. It's a powered microphone, a powered shotgun mic. It's got the same features and that is probably the best microphone that I own. But again, it's an XLR input, not an audio jack standard. So bear that in mind that it won't just plug straight into an A7S III or a Canon R5. So we're in the pro category now. Hands down, the best light I think money can buy for the professional YouTube setup is the one that we're using now as a key light. It's the Aperture 120D with the light dome. Super soft key light. It gives a really nice skin complexion. I guarantee that the big YouTubers that you watch on your favorite channels will definitely be using an Aperture 120D. We've got a two point lighting setup going on now. So we've got a nice key light, 45 degrees off from my uh, a cam and then I've got a backlight which is an LED panel light just to give me that break off the background and it should look pretty good and finally you're going to combine this with a decent tripod again I'd be looking at a Manfrotto tripod or a Kea tripod depending on what camera you actually go for as well as if you are a vlogger looking at getting one of these a jobby Gorillapod 5k one of the most versatile bits of kit that I've got you've got all the adjustments that you need to be able to put your camera and microphone pretty much anywhere. I've had this thing hanging off the side of a racetrack before as cars come down the main straight. I've used it for vlogging. Casey Neistat made these guys famous by using the bendy tripod for all his vlogs. And now every vlogger's got one. So I'd definitely look at getting one of these. So my recommendation for professional camera equipment for YouTube cinematography in 2021 and my package that is available in the link below is the Sony A7S III combined with a 16 to 35 G Master F2.8 lens with the Rode VideoMic NTG microphone, an Aperture 120D key light, a Joby Gorilla Pod. That is literally, in my opinion, the best that money can buy. And if you can't buy it, rent it. It's definitely the best pick, in my opinion, for YouTube in 2021. And that's why I use it for my channel. It's literally my dream setup. I'm so happy with it. Like it does everything that I need it to do. And for a vlog camera, it's it's pretty perfect. For me, the eye autofocus and the flip screen is second to none. And just have a look at the B-roll shots that you can get with this at 100 frames per second. 